Welcome back to another discussion on The Lord's Recovery Unchained. This video will be short because we're going to discuss just one example given by the co-workers in one of their articles on shepherdingwords.com, and the article makes a pretty bold statement in its title alone, which is, if you can believe it, reading only the pure word, a dangerous and unbiblical notion. The article begins saying, from time to time, a brother will trumpet the misguided notion that saints should read only the Bible, the pure word, untainted by anyone's interpretation. Some have used this notion as a ploy to entice the saints to reject the ministry of Watchman Nee and Witness Lee as, quote, man's interpretation. On the surface, the teaching that we should read the Bible exclusively and without any interpretation may sound laudable. Actually, this notion is both unbiblical and impractical. It casts aside a crucial means by which God perfects men in this age and conversely inflates the self and makes a person subject to being misled into serious errors. Well, given that the co-workers are not shy about calling the ministry both the interpreted word as well as an interpretation of the word, and they therefore do acknowledge that the ministry is indeed an interpretation and since Watchman Nee and Witness Lee were indeed men, and not horses, dogs, frogs, or gods, I'm not sure what the actual problem is with calling the ministry man's interpretation, because that's really what it is. In the article, the co-workers provide some examples from the Bible in their attempt to scare you from reading just the Bible. This video will look at just one of them. The co-workers refer to the snapshot in Acts 8, where Philip was led by the Spirit to encounter an Ethiopian court official who was reading Isaiah. That court official didn't understand what he was reading or who Isaiah was talking about, and the record shows that Philip preached the gospel, and as they traveled along the road together, the Ethiopian official saw water and wanted to be baptized. So the co-workers use these verses in Acts 8 to say this interaction shows that the quote pure word is not enough and that the Ethiopian needed someone else to interpret it for him. Sounds good, right? What could be wrong with what they say? Well, first of all, the Ethiopian official was not a believer at the time Philip encountered him. He was an unbeliever, and Philip told him the good news about Jesus. But the brothers who are advocating reading only the Bible are speaking about believers doing so, saints in the Lord's recovery who are already saved, not unbelievers. The situation the co-workers have used of an unbeliever needing some help simply does not apply. Secondly, ironically enough, the situation doesn't stop at simply not applying, but if you keep reading the verses, it continues on and actually ends up contradicting what the co-workers say. Because after the Ethiopian was saved and baptized, what happened? Philip was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord, leaving, that's right, leaving the Ethiopian believer alone with only his Bible. Witness Lee wasn't around to help him out. In fact, far and away, the majority of believers in the history of mankind got along just fine without ever hearing or reading a word Witness Lee said. So the very passage the co-workers use here to try to show the Bible isn't enough isn't a situation concerning believers and actually ends with showing an apostle being just fine with leaving a new believer alone with just his Bible. And fittingly enough, this very example should demonstrate for you that man's interpretation that the ministry of Witness Lee itself is not safe from the same peril the co-workers pretend you will fall victim to if you set it aside, because the interpretation they have fed you regarding these verses in Acts 8 is not what the verses even present. Man's interpretation is not your fail-safe. You still have to discern for yourself every single time. Now, there are many more problems wrong with the co-workers article, not the least of which are all the threats mixed throughout. I mean, look at this. Look at these 22 threats straight from just this one article condemning you for simply wanting to read the Bible. 22 chains around your throat threatening you for returning to the Bible without witnessly speaking over it all the time. 
Have the co-workers forgotten that the Bible is what God gave to his people? Saints and listeners, can you catch that the message implicit in what the co-workers are saying is that God himself left his own people in a dangerous situation by giving them his word, and that it's as if Witness Lee is the savior, as if Witness Lee is coming to the rescue to save you from the danger God apparently put you in? It's as if the co-workers have completely forgotten what Jesus himself says in the Gospel of John. Jesus tells his disciples that the Father will send the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit which is from God, and he will send the Spirit in Jesus' name. And Jesus says that this Holy Spirit will teach them all things and will remind them of everything Jesus told them. This Spirit guides us into all truth and helps us understand what God has freely given us. This is Jesus' promise to the believers. This is the situation God instituted. God gave us his word, and God sends his own Holy Spirit in the name of his Son to guide believers into truth. And yet the co-workers have written a lengthy article acting as if this is the most dangerous, threatening, arrogant, individualistic, presumptive, dark, unbiblical, impure, heretical, perilous situation, and that you are only safe from the combination of the Bible and the Holy Spirit if Witness Lee is also there at your side. This is beyond an absurd situation for what is supposed to be the genuine expression of the Christian church. They view the Bible as dangerous unless Witness Lee is there to protect you. Now, before anyone accuses me of having a chip on my shoulder towards any man's interpretation of the Bible, let me say clearly that of course I would agree with the co-workers when they say that God gives to the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers, and many more. Although remember, when they speak of the, quote, God's New Testament economy that they refer to as a qualifier, they are referring to a different teaching from what the Bible means by God's economy. God's economy is not a teaching, but in the Bible is shown to be the stewardship entrusted by God to Paul. So I'm not saying that we reject all ministries or that we reject all Christian writings, that we never listen to someone teach the word, or that we never read what anyone else has said about what is in scripture. Rejecting these things would mean you could miss many of the valuable insights, experiences, information, and encouragement found in all those things. And admittedly, the Bible can often be difficult to understand. After all, Peter himself says this of Paul's writings. But when we listen to teachers of Scripture, we shouldn't listen to them while ourselves being unaware of what Scripture says. We are supposed to be sober, responsible believers, testing and weighing and examining what teachers say, and discerning whether what they teach is true or not according to the Bible. And moreover, remember, the backdrop of this situation is not a typical one. The co-workers have completely neglected to acknowledge the glaring problem in the Lord's recovery that causes so many to feel such a deep need to return to the pure word alone. Because the backdrop that those who advocate a return to the pure word are working in is the extreme restriction in the Lord's recovery to that of just one man's interpretation, the one publication, that of Witness Lee, and of course, to a lesser extent, Watchman Nee. And the article from the co-workers illustrates this perfectly. The leaders in the Lord's recovery go to the lengths of writing public articles scaring the saints about all the damaging things that, who knew, are apparently inevitable if the saints step away from the non-stop voice of Witness Lee. And so this advocating returning to the Bible alone is more than a normal reaction to this kind of unscriptural and a impressive restriction. I might compare it to a child who was always made to drink water mixed with some mud growing up, and was so fed up with tasting mud water, all the child wanted to do was drink nothing but pure, unmixed, untainted, unadulterated water for a while. It doesn't mean that child will never drink some water steeped in tea bags or water with some lemonade mix which, to be clear, in this metaphor symbolize a variety of Christian writings, not just that of Witness Lee. So in light of this backdrop, wanting pure water alone is a legitimate reaction to the acutely felt pressure in the Lord's recovery that if you get into anything other than the ministry, if you read anything other than what Witness Lee said, if you drink anything other than water mixed with only one contaminated substance, 
You are made to feel like you are wasting your time with unhealthy, low, dark, or deviated things, and that you are reading things that have no light. Of course, there are other problems with the article. For example, they're scaring you that you will inevitably inflate your assessment of yourselves and your opinions, and yet somehow at the same time the co-workers manage to avoid explaining how Witness Lee was so special as to miraculously skirt what apparently inevitably would happen to the rest of us mere mortals. And not the least of which is the repeated false assumption on their part that someone who speaks up about simply wanting to read God's word without Witness Lee's voice always echoing in their ears must be someone who wants to exalt their own private understandings in an act of arrogant self-conceit, or apparently must be ones who want to advance their own opinions, and yet at the same time the co-workers simultaneously awkwardly miss the obvious that Witness Lee's ministry is just that, you know, the spread of his own private understanding and opinions, but I'll leave that stuff for you to discern. Except, wait, the co-workers think so little of any of the saints' discernment that they scorn the thought that any of you saints who want to read the Bible alone might actually have any capacity to discern the truth. I mean this. This should bother you and keep you up at night, tossing and turning, saints. If you'd like to read the pure word without having to run it through Witness Lee's filter all the time, the co-workers would consider you saints to be so immature, so weak, so helpless, that they don't think you have the capacity to discern the truth. You mean you saints have been in the ministry and the Lord's recovery for decades upon decades, cumulative hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of years together? and yet you still have no capacity to discern the truth? Saints, this would indicate a serious lack in the ministry itself if you are immature, weak, and helpless after all of this time spent in it. And additionally, then why would the Bible tell you to discern good from evil, to examine the scriptures, to be prepared with an answer, to abound in knowledge, to test the spirits, to have a mind that is alert and fully sober, to use your mind, and that to reason is a perfectly acceptable way of communicating the gospel? Because none of these are weak, helpless, immature, undiscerning things, saints. Rather, they couldn't be more active, alert, mature, sober, sharp, involved, or discerning. Saints, way too many things are way too upside down here. Don't ignore that small voice that's been bothering you for a long time now. So what's the point of this video? Just to illustrate once again that as you read the ministry or take in what the coworkers say, you need to approach everything you hear and read with critical analysis. I've said it in other videos, but if you want to be deceived, just get out of your mind. If you want to be deceived, then continue to treat the ministry in the Lord's recovery as if it could never be wrong, because the ministers themselves have admitted that they and their teachings are not infallible, and so, saints, you need to act like the mature believers you are supposed to be and discern what is true and what is false in the ministry and in the co-workers speaking.